Hi, this is Martin Blanco. I have a podcast called I Wish I Were a Pursuit, and I'm very excited because we're going to take that podcast and put it on the radio, on WGCH Radio. We're going to start next week, and I'm here in Bridgeport, Connecticut for the Columbus Day Parade and Festivities. It's going to help kick off the radio show. The, the people here are so much fun. It's so exciting. We've been talking to some some really outstanding citizens of Bridgeport, and the enthusiasm and excitement here today is palpable. You can feel it, and um, the parade's going to be a lot of fun, and I'm, I'm happy to be here. I want to thank WGCH, and we'll see you on the radio. Take care. Hi, I'm Martin Blanco, and it's uh, we're in Bridgeport for the Columbus Day Parade, and I have with me... Christopher Columbus, oh my goodness. Now, actually, this Tom, is Tommy. Tom Naples. Tommy, how long have you been doing Columbus here uh, for Bridgeport? Probably at least three or four years. Three or four years, three okay. Four years. So that you're an expert, you're a professional. You're, uh, you're, 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 as, as, as expert as, as, as you can be, be as far as sitting on a boat. You've got the look, you've got the persona, uh, it's, uh, and it's working for you. But yeah. thanks for talking with us. Um, I'm starting a new radio show based on my podcast, I Wish I Were a Prosciutto. And it's all about Italian food and the traditions behind the food. Let me ask you, when you go home, what's your comfort food? What do you like to What do you like to eat? I always say this: if if I had to have a last meal on death row, it would be eggplant parm. Oh, you and me both. All right. So if we if we have to go, maybe we'll share a cell. That's great. Hey, we, growing up, we're we're about the same age. Do you have any nice memories of what what it was like making the food? Uh, oh, it was wonderful memories. Yeah. So my my grandparents, everyone would go there, and it was typical. Everyone sat around the yeah. kitchen table. Uh, holidays, yeah. we were cooking for 20, 25 yeah. people. Yep. And it was just like it was chaos in a small kitchen. But it just I, I was able to observe, and so I picked up a lot of the That's great. cooking and the baking uh, skills. I tried to recreate that for my kids as best I could. Scale's a little smaller, but there's a lot of the same impulses, the same yes. traditions, the same foods, and they've learned to enjoy eat the pleasures of eating is the food, but also the comity, the camaraderie, the exactly. conversation, the love around the table. Yes. And, and if nothing else, I've given them that. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Because it's just like, you know, you hear all the time people say, you know, families don't, you know, sit together no, anymore. No. We just had, we had that luxury just sitting around, you know, with that many people, there were like 12 different conversations going on. And it just was amazing. My grandmother would be talking to somebody, and she would answer somebody for like five conversations. Yeah, she can, she can juggle that. Yeah, yeah. So, was she the head cook? Or uh, owner yes. the head cook? Yes. My grandma, uh, two, two Italian grandmas, obviously, they both cook marvelous cooks in tiny little kitchens. Yes. I don't know how they do. I've got a nice island. I've got storage space. i got burners. Tiny little space they cook for 20, 20 30 exactly. people, not missing a beat. I don't know how they did it, but it was, it was a miracle. I, I admire them for yeah, that. It was something amazing. Else. Good. All right, you excited for the parade? I am very excited. Okay. I hope that, you know the weather cooperates. It's going to warm uh, up. If it stays like this, it's fine. If okay. it warms up a hey, little bit, it is. You're Columbus. Better. You weathered. You weathered a I, lot more than, than a damn exactly. day. There we right. Okay. <laughs> hey, thanks for talking with us, Tommy. It's a pleasure. No problem. Right, you bye take bye. care. Happy, Happy day. Columbus Day, everyone. Hi, uh, this is Martin Blanco from I Wish I Were a Shoot, and I have the honor to sit here for a few minutes with the Grand Marshal for the Bridgeport Columbus Day Parade, Elaine Ficara. Elaine, thanks thanks for taking some time. It's a pleasure meeting you. Pleasure meeting you. So, uh, my, my show is about Italian food, but really the traditions behind the food and the uh, comedy of the Italian table. And uh, we, so we like to share stories about you know, what's our what's our comfort food? What's our Italian comfort to go to when we want to feel good? What's yours? Well, I will tell you, mine is pasta fagiol. Pasta fagiol. Ah, <laughs> I can't blame you. In fact, as part of the uh, as part of the uh, celebration this year, we had a pasta fagiol contest. Oh my goodness! So we invited uh, several restaurants and individuals to come and make their pasta fagiol and had a panel of judges okay. as well as the people's popular vote okay. to decide who made the best pasta fagiol. Who made the best pasta fagiol? Well, the winner of the judges mm. uh, judging was uh, Dominic Faustini from Tashua Knowles. Okay. The uh, people's choice was Mariana's Pantry. 
in Trumbull. Okay. So I guess um, Trumbull's the place. I mean, one I way or the other, Trumbull's because Joshua knows. Yeah, I'm going to make a note of that. But you know, people are very, very particular about their pasta and yes. I will tell you that you know the way my mother made it and the way my grandmother made it. In of fact, course. on the People's Choice ballot, I put they had three choices of you know one, two, or three. One was not quite like your nana's. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Two was pretty close to your nana's, yeah. and three was better than your nana's. Oh which, my goodness! You know, what, which I told everyone like, I don't think you know, so. You better, you better <laughs> think really long and yeah. hard about that because yeah. when you say something's better than your nana's, yeah. you're gonna you're gonna risk the wooden spoon. Oh, you're going out on a limb. Absolutely. You're going out on a limb. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. So we, you know, pasta vajol. My mother would make that um, usually. You know, at least like twice a month, maybe three times a month. Mm-hmm. And I know that when my um, when my late husband was alive, um, he loved her pasta vajol. And when even when she was, you know, the last two years of her life, she was on dialysis. She was very frail, but she, she, we used to go up there every Saturday to take care of her. Drive up from Connecticut for the you know Saturday into Sunday, mm-hmm. and she would she would have a pot of pasta vajol on the stove ready to go for Wayne. Not for me, but for, for Wayne. Wayne. Right. For Wayne. So, but um, I, I have managed to replicate it, um, okay. you know, pretty well, well. Bravo to you. Wonderful, wonderful. So, um, you know, this parade is a celebration of many things. C- certainly, you know, Christopher Columbus's discovery, but I think it goes much deeper into the glory of the Italian mm-hmm. heritage and the contributions of Italian uh, Americans to the greater good of this country. Uh, and you've been involved in many, many you know, cultural things in the city of Bridgeport. Today in 2024, what's what's resonating in, in a large way in Bridgeport in terms of the Italian American experience? What what are... Um, I think that, um, you know, and I, and I see this from my own point of view. I don't want to yeah. speak on behalf of everybody no, who's no, Italian American, but um, I see that, you know, the Italian American community here is still very, very strong. Um, you know, even though, you know, when I first came here in 1980, Madison Avenue down down by Michelizzi's, that was, you know, a whole row of Italian restaurants. Mm. And much like any other city over time, you know, other ethnic groups, other, um, you know, countries have kind of, you know, taken over different spots there. But there's still a very strong community throughout the entire city. And they are very, very proud of their heritage. So as am I, and as, as we all should, be yeah, here. and and you know, as as any as anyone of any Absolutely. heritage, right? So Absolutely. I I think that um, that everyone wants to feel that they're when they're when they're thinking about their own heritage, whether they're Italian or Portuguese or Brazilian or Haitian or whatever, it's what resonates with them and makes them feel good about where their parents and their grandparents Mm -hmm. came from, you know, and and I know that I think back as a child, you know, my parents were first born here, their parents immigrated from from, uh, Italy and from Sicily, and, you know, they held the traditions, and and our families held the traditions, and and we still try to keep those traditions alive, and that's why, you know, we... We try to instill it in, you know, by having a parade family sure. and, you know, get the younger kids involved because that's the only way that you're going to continue to thrive as a nation, right? Mm-hmm. And as a community is if everyone has a feeling, you know, yes. that they're able to feel like they contribute something. Mm-hmm. So. You know, I agree 100%. And for my money, yeah. if one really wants to get at the the essence of Columbus Day in the, in the best sense, is that we have a country here where all these different... Uh, communities, all these different traditions, ethnicities, countries can contribute to this wonderful fabric. And look, we grew up in the Italian American tradition, and it's an excellent one. But I love learning about other ones, and I know people love the Italian American <laughs> life too. And and when we can come together and share, that will keep the traditions going too, because other people will pick up on it. Right. And uh, right. if I did one thing good with my kids, I think I did a couple good things, but I gave them enough. I gave them a taste. Of, uh, of what that was like, and they have that with them now in their adult life. Of and a couple times a year, we get to the Columbus State Christmas Eve, La Vigila, Easter, you know, 
and we can really celebrate in a grand way, yep. and that's a wonderful uh, touchstone to yep. the battery. Now let so, me ask you a question. Yeah, please, please. Does your family manage to get the seven fishes in on, on Christmas we, Eve? You know something? Yes, <laughs> yes we do, thanks to my Aunt Rosanna, who keep, <coughs> keeps it going, but I will tell you, I didn't know it was called Night of the Seven Fishes until I was in my early 40s. Someone said, oh, you must do Night of the Seven Fishes. I'm like, I don't know. Then we get together for the feast, La, v- uh, La-, La-, La Vigila di Natale, right. Right. and there's there's seven fishes. <laughs> All right, maybe a little I know. more. I know. But, but Aunt Rosanna keeps it going. Here's my dirty secret. I don't like fish. I can't eat it. I can't. But I am never happier than when we're doing the seven fishes. Because I find I'll eat the red peppers. I'll have I'll have the crispelli. I'll have some bread. I'll have some broccoli rabe. But everyone is so happy, and it's like reliving my childhood. So yeah. I'm okay. Yeah. I'm okay eating like that night because everyone's having a great time. Well, what is your background? Are you? Uh uh, what part of Italy? Uh, my mom's family is from Ortona, which is on the Adriatic Sea, sort okay. of parallel yep. to Rome, yep. south of Pescata. Mm-hmm. Yep. And my dad's family comes from the foothills of Naples. Okay. All right. So you're all on the mainland. Yeah. See, yeah. Our, my family was, uh, my father's family came from outside of Messina, mm-hmm. and my mother's family came from outside of Naples. Okay. So that's... Your mother's Lots. family, my father's family, may may have crossed yeah, paths possibly, somewhere along yeah. the line. But um, and I know. apologize. No, 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 For whatever they may no, have done. No, no, but um, that's how uh, you know, quite the disagreements over what kind of food there should be on the table. Oh yes. I'll just tell you that the Sicilians, the the big thing for Christmas Eve is the bacala soup. Yes. So if you have, if you hate fish. I like fish. Yeah. I won't go anywhere near that. Uh, so. The main the main meal is uh, stucco, which is very similar to the bac- bacala. It is that codfish stew. It's a main dish, and 90% of the people go crazy over it. And me, and my brother, and a couple of my cousins are like, "You guys enjoy more yeah. for you." Right. But but I'll fun. tell you, it smells great because it's it, it's really the smell is not of the fish; it is of the is of the tomato and the red pepper. Yeah. I can tell you something when, from when my grandmother. When I was young, my grandmother was preparing this. She used to get the the stucco dry. Mm-hmm. She'd have to soak it. So good. And you smelled it. You could tell what day of the year it was by what it smelled like in my grandmother's house. I'm like, oh, it must be the 23rd. Yeah, because exactly. It's, a, it's the 20th. That's, I can that's remember coming terrible. home from college, and my father would, because um, I grew up in Rhode Island, so my father would go up to Federal Hill okay. and buy the, buy the dried cod, bring it home, and uh, I think it was like the week before Christmas. Yep. So every day, Start change soaking. the water. And yep. the, but it was in the So my mother would, would say to him, put it in the garage. He would cover it, the thing. Put it in the garage. You could change the water. Yeah, keep but it the out. entire house yep. smelled like uh, reconstituted cod. And I would come home from college, and my, my mother would be like, you really should try it. I look at it and go, no, <laughs> absolutely not. No. Keep it at that end of the table. That's smart. My father would go, you don't know what you're missing. Oh, oh, you have an idea. Yeah. Well, All right. Prunes and potatoes. I don't get it. But, you're, yeah. you're a Rhode Island girl. Do you? Are you familiar with the works of Joseph Luzzi, professor of Italian studies at Bard College? I am not, All but right. I should be. We, well, for, just for the fun of it, when you have a chance, get either one of his books or look for some of his lectures on okay. YouTube. He looks like Sal Mineo. He's ah! a dead ring Sal Mineo. <laughs> he's the most engaging professor, and he's all about... Uh, it's all about the food. It's all about reading. Yep. It's all about the language. Yep. It's so engaging, so easy to listen to. It's from Rhode Island, and some okay. people go talk about those traditions growing up in, in that house with I'll his parents to, from I'll Italy. I'll have to look for those. Joe Luzzi, you won't be disappointed. Luzzi. Listen, I could talk to you for hours. I know you're busy. <laughs> Probably a lot of people want to want to chat you up, and it's a great day. Are you excited to be the I'm Grand Marshal? because I'm wearing a sash. I know. Really the Otherwise, right, you can't get the time Otherwise, of Otherwise, you know, people would be like, who's that? Are you excited? I understand you're only the second woman to have the honor of being the Grand Marshal. I am. Last year, uh, they chose uh, Nancy DiNardo mm-hmm. from Trumbull. She was the very first woman in 115 years. Yes. That was the Okay. Uh, to lead the parade, and um, and this year I was lucky enough to follow in her footsteps, and uh, which I think you know, I mean, I I was I, I truly was like very surprised when they asked me. I was like, Are you sure, because I'm usually the one who's like behind the, the person, yeah. you know, you know, the mayor or whatever. You know, I used to work for, work for Mayor Bill Finch, and you know, I. I work in PR, so I'm the one who's usually writing the talking points for somebody else sure. or doing whatever. And so they're like, no, 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 we, you know, you know, you've been here for a long time. You've been doing this, and you know, I have. I've been here since 
1980. Um, I came here right out of college and to work at what was then the Telegram. Uh, for those folks who remember the Telegram and the Post, the morning and the afternoon okay. paper. It's now the Connecticut Post, are owned by Hearst. Yes. And, um, you know, I... Uh, so I, I came here, uh, I'm like a Bridgeport transplant, and you know, Bridgeport is near and dear to my heart, and I, uh, I'm i a big cheerleader for the city, uh, and so... Who better, Grand Marshal, then? Who better? You know, it's, it's quite an honor, and really, I just want to say this, and, and this is really important, it's not about me. You see all these people here, right? There are, there are people in the community, there are people who take part in all these things, it's all these volunteers, and that's the only way that all of this gets accomplished. Yes. You know, it's not on it's not on one person. It is everybody, and they all work together. We all work together. And I just want to also say one thing too that Chris Caruso, who is the president of the Council of Italian American Societies, um, many people who are listening to WPKN know Chris have probably heard him on the radio in different or on TV. He was a former state legislator. He's a he's also a, you know a born and bred Bridgeporter. And he, um, he's been in the hospital for, uh, you know, more than a couple of weeks, and everybody is really, you know, praying for him Take and hoping he gets better. You know, he, he's getting better every day, and we just want to say that, you know, we we all are doing this to make to make Chris proud. So. Okay. And, and I'm sure he, I'm sure he will be. I'm sure he will be. Yeah. All right, prayers for Chris Caruso. And it looks like the sun's coming out. The sun's coming another, out. Another Columbus Woo! Day miracle. <laughs> and uh, you know, you're a fine, you're a fine representative. And I know you've come up from these trenches of volunteers. I can't think of a better person to be uh, to you. be the Grand Marshal today. Thank I you. wish you a lot of fun, and I hope our paths cross again. Maybe you'll be a guest on on my show sometime. Absolutely. We'll have this conversation. We can talk, talk about prosciutto. We can talk about prosciutto. Great. You know, we should have 27 year, 23 year, 18 year yeah. Parma versus this. San Daniel, or the yeah. Yeah, Reserve. How can you talk about it? Because, oh, you know. Fantastic. If you don't bend to ravioli on Federal Hill. Yeah, you know. I do. All right, all have right. a great have day. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right, I'm going to eat.